Hey, what's up guys? Let's talk attributes and how you can use them to your advantage. Okay, so first off, what is an attribute? So it's something that can sit on any instance, uh, even the workspace over here, you can throw out an attribute and you can give it a name and it could be any kind of value here. Strings, booleans, numbers, blah, blah, blah. Can't be an object though, which is uh, one big thing about attributes that I'll talk about later. Can't be an object, but it could be just about anything else. For now, let's just stick uh let's say world name is a string and you can see i can put in a value down here you know fill it in with some junk clear it etc so attributes are great for storing information on a specific thing so let's say this part has some purpose let's say it's uh let's call this a pet right let's say this is a pet in your game obviously this is just a purple brick we can give it a name uh we could probably give it a probably a color we can make that make that a color three and uh, maybe this pet has a um, some kind of effect on it, right? It's got some sparkles going on. So maybe our pet's orange. Our effect is sparkle, and the name is dog or whatever. Something that's really nice is that's unique to this object. And if we make a clone of it, we get the same attributes on the clone, and we can edit it over here. And you'll notice that each individual thing has its own individual data. So this is really helpful for if you have a bunch of different things in your game that each need their own individual data. So in my last video, I talked about using attributes on the player to store information that would change between the server and the client. So I just want to write a quick implementation and also show kind of a utility module that I generally create for most of my games. <music> Okay, so what I've quickly written here is a little thing that when the player joins, it gives them a time attribute. And I've written this attribute changed wrapper and increment wrapper that I'll talk about in a minute. But the player joins and we spawn this thread, which essentially just uh, increments the player's time um, every second. So if we play, and I wrote it right, which I obviously did. If we play, and this time I wrote it, okay. So I fixed it and I've written it properly. Now we can see that as the time changes with this thread and we can see the attribute changes on my player here over time that it increments. And I can adjust this to be whatever on the client and it's gonna have no impact on the results on the server. However, if on the server we wanna adjust a player, say they buy a thing that increments their time, uh, we can bump this up to like, you know, a hundred or a thousand thirty five or whatever you can set it there and you'll notice that it'll keep adding time and if we switch back it'll be over here and it's reflected it's replicated across the client okay so let's take a look at these two functions that i've written i've written an attribute changed function and an increment function so what i usually do is i'll write this attribute util and it'll have two functions in it it'll have a changed and an increment and what's really nice is I can get this attribute util module and say dot changed on something. And what it'll do is it'll handle binding this change signal as well as getting the current state of the attribute and passing it into the callback that we defined. So if I, so what I can do is I can use this attribute util in here to increment an attribute by a certain amount. So we can maybe increment the time by two ticks instead, or we can create a connection like here where the time is changed. We run the game, we can see that it's working the same and our delta is changing by two. So this is my attribute util that I have in my utils folder for my module loader. And you can see that I've added an extra argument here, which ignores the initial state. Essentially all this does is calls our callback once for the initial state of the attribute when you bind the dot changed and then calls it again later whenever it's changed. See if I can find it anywhere. Here we go. So. Something I have here is that I call this dot changed when the local player's current tycoon changes. And this state seems to be the current ID of the tycoon that I have. What this seems to do is it changes which frame is selected in the interface. So see, I have peasant castle and I have peasant castle too. So when I switch to it, it updates a lot of different things, but you can see stored on the player here, I have all sorts of information. So my banner color, my banner pattern, and my current tycoon which I just set the ID to default to, but if I switch back to the first one, you can see that it switches us to the default tycoon. So this is a really easy way to store relevant data in a game 
that will change and you want to reflect those changes. So in this game, I have a feature where you can roll for a certain banner pattern. And I've advised all these banners by all these colors and all these patterns. And I can re-roll for some gems and I can get some different patterns, changes, there we go, we got some squigglies, then we get some diamonds and royal purple. I'm gonna keep rolling until I get the crowns. Gold, 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 gold. Ah, I got crowns in pinecone, gross. But what I can do is I can go onto the server, should be able to do that, and you can see that this is reflected over to the client, and this all ties in back to my last video where I talked about data stores. And essentially that um, I use these attributes in the data stores because I can store them on the player, and it's player data, and you can adjust it with multiple scripts and it's all saved and stored. Now, something you can't use attributes for is objects. And so this is where you'll use an object value. If you want to store something, like in this case, the owner of a plot, this will point to a player. So we can say, if we're trying to reference some part in here, we can go up the tree to the plot and then we can find the owner and the owner points to a uh, player. And so if I go in and play the game, see, so this points to my player character such that if there's something in this plot that I need to have access to the player for, that's what this is for. Otherwise, I wouldn't really recommend using object values for much else. All right, well, that was a little uh, talk about attributes and how I use them. If you have any questions, comments, drop them down below. Have a good day.